Hello, pleasant day to you and welcome to High Five. I'm very pleased to be hosting this program and uh, today's uh, video cast is a continuation of what I started last week. Last week I started discussing marriage, divorce and remarriage from a biblical point of view as it relates to the Christian church. Just want to remind you that this video cast is coming to you through the courtesy of Mission Tabernacle of William and Waterlane Streets in Trinidad, West Indies. The lead pastor there is Pastor Noelin McIntosh, and I believe he would be only too happy to hear from you if you would take the time to write to us or write to him. Let us know where you are viewing this program and kindly share a comment. Give us a like and a subscribe on the platforms from which you are listening to this video cast. I like to pursue this subject today and as I mentioned earlier on, the topic is what causes divorce. This discussion will be in several parts and I hope it will become obvious to you. I'll try to show you the causes of divorce, followed by the consequences of divorce, and in some way to show you the cure for divorce. The main text that I'm going to read to you is a collaboration really of two texts. It is taken from the Gospels, that is of Matthew and St. Mark. But because of the time economy, on this program, I just like to read from the Gospel of St. Mark and the 10th chapter, and it says, And some Pharisees came to him, testing him, and began to question him whether it is lawful for a man to divorce his wife. And he answered and said to them, What did Moses command you? And they said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. Verse number five, but Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. And again in verse number six, it says, but from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female for this cause. A man shall leave his father and mother and the two shall become one flesh. Consequently, they are no longer two, but one. And he concluded by saying, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Now, according to this text and the others that I have read in the previous broadcast, it is plain to see that the divorce was granted because of the hardness of heart. I'd like to talk about the hardness of heart in this video cast and ask the question, what is a hardened heart? In order to understand the heart, we'd have to look at it physiologically. The hardening of the heart is called arteriosclerosis. I hope I got that right. The heart is the central muscle in us as human beings. The heart in us forms around the third week of pregnancy, nearly at the very, very beginning of our lives. This amazing heart sends blood throughout our body in an organized manner, impacting even the tip of our toes to our very fingers. There is more to the heart physiologically, but I'd like to leave this or that discussion to the medical professional who can tell you much more than I can. My discussion is on the words of Jesus and what the Bible sees as the cause of separation and divorce, the hardness of heart. In the Bible, the heart is central to our salvation. The heart is where belief and unbelief resides. The heart is challenged to trust God and to believe his word. And this matter of the hardening of the heart is something that is very 
critical, not only as it relates to divorce and marriage, but in terms of listening and obeying and pursuing the plan and purposes of Almighty God. In the book of Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 9 and 10, St. Paul said that if you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you will be saved. And he went on to say, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You see, a heart that is hardened to the word will be hardened towards Jesus. It will shut him out. But sticking to the point, the hardness of heart, I'd like to quote Webster as he defines a hardened heart in the sense of which I am speaking to you today. Quote, To stop having kind and friendly feeling for someone or caring about that someone. End of quote. So if you are having a hardened heart, then this is evident. You'll stop having friendly feeling and you would stop caring for someone that you love. It is a dangerous sign. You are about to go to the hardening of the heart. In the next place, I'd like to discuss what the Bible says about the hardening of the heart, how it comes about, or the cause of the hardening of the heart, which leads a person to seek a divorce, which displeases God because God hates separation and he hates divorce. So let me share with you what I'd like to narrow down to seven symptoms of the hardening of the heart to any prospective persons who that are contemplating uh, ending their marriage in a divorce I plead with you to listen to me and you can save yourself your family your children by extension your friends a lot of heartaches and problems if you can find a cure in the Word of God and certainly I believe the Word of God has the answer for you. The first symptoms of the hardening of the heart is that of the lack of understanding. It was St. Peter who was a married disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave this advice to the young married couples, he said, in 1 Peter, the third chapter, Likewise, husbands, live with your wives according to understanding, showing honor to the woman as unto the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of, of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. So if you lack understanding, then you might fail to understand that marriage is God's will for mankind. It is God's idea, and it is God's idea that your marriage should last until death do you part. In the Gospel of St. Mark and the 8th chapter, the disciples were near the hardening of their heart because of the lack of understanding. And it was surrounding the miracles of the loaves and fishes. And in the 8th uh, chapter and verse 17, it says, Why are you talking about having no bread? And this is Jesus questioning his disciples. Do you still not see or understand? Do you still not see or understand? Or are you hardening your heart? Which is dangerous. The wise King Solomon admonishes in Proverbs 4 and 7. He said, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and in your all your getting, get understanding. In all your getting, get understanding. I think that sometimes our focus is on the accumulation of appliances and gadgets and other things. But in order for you to have a happy and a holy marriage, the Word of God says, get understanding. Proverbs 24 says, through wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. You might have gone through great pain to design a beautiful home for you and your family. 
But the Word of God says, by understanding it is established. The finest architect and uh, you might have used the finest builders and materials, but it is of no value if it is not established as a home. And the way that your house can be established as a home is with understanding. If you lack understanding and you fail to understand that God intends that your marriage last a lifetime and that God hates separation, then you are heading in a very dangerous place where you would hurt yourself for a very, very long time. In the second place, as I pursue this topic, the second cause of the hardening of the heart is bitterness and resentment. You see, you can avoid div divorce and separation many times by simply avoiding to become bitter and resentful. That would hurt you big time. In Ephesians, the fourth chapter and verse 32, it says, get rid of all bitterness. This is not something that you have to pray about. It says, get rid of it. Get rid of rage and anger and brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ in God has forgiven you. Would you take that advice? Moving along, the third cause of the hardening of the heart is isolation. Isolation when you are angry and bitter, and that is the worst time to become isolated. In isolation, there is avoidance. It becomes apparent. You deliberately seek to avoid the person with whom you are upset. And in this case, it is deliberately seeking to avoid your spouse with whom you are having a quarrel. A splendid example of avoidance is in the early chapters of the Bible, in the gospel, uh, sorry, in the book of Genesis, and the fourth chapter, it portrays Cain and Abel, and it tells us about Cain, less than favorable offering which God re rejected. And because of his rejection, or the rejection of his offering, Cain chose to isolate himself from God, and then chose to take matters in his own hand which resulted in the murder of his brother. You see, you too can become like this. You can take matters in your own hand by separating yourselves from God and from his word and from the people who care about you and from godly counsel. And you will hate people in your heart so much that the Bible's, Bible calls this murder. If you hate somebody in your heart, you have already murdered them. You can refuse isolation and look to resolution and restitution. The fourth cause of the hardening of the heart is the refusal to forgive. The refusal to forgive the offending spouse is the sign of a hardened heart. In Matthew the sixth chapter and verse fourteen and fifteen, Jesus says, "For if you give uh, forgive others." When they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. And in Luke the 17th chapter, verses 3 and 4, Jesus said, So watch yourselves, if your brother or sister sin against you, and I may add your husband or your wife, rebuke them, correct them, confront them. And if they repent, forgive them, even if they sin against you seven times in a day, and seven times come back to you saying, I am sorry, or I repent, Jesus says, you must forgive this. Forgive them. You practice this and see how it would work miracles in your way. The fifth cause of the hardening of the heart is coldness. Coldness to your spouse can be an indicator of a hardened heart. Coldness is defined in our context of discussion in this way. It is a way of behaving or speaking that does not show kindness or love or emotion and it is not friendly. So if you are cold towards your spouse, you will behave and speak in a way that is lacking kindness. You will talk short, you will grunt instead of speaking pleasantly, you would lack 
love and emotion you would hardly show good emotion rather there will be rage and anger in you all the time the loss of joy that once reside within you and your spouse and your relationship because of coldness it will be shut out it is not a safe place to be when this happens listen talk to someone who can offer godly counsel and pray and be honest to God because a broken and a contrite heart God will not despise the sixth cause of the hardening of the heart is what is called pride Proverbs reminds us in the 16th chapter and verse 8 that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride can be bold or quiet. Pride can be introverted or extroverted. To me, the worst kind of a pride is the introverted type of a pride where one mate just clam up, clam up and wouldn't talk, would not respond, would not uh, re re reciprocate to, to the other spouse in spite of their many efforts. Pride leads us to distrust your spouse and you become self-opinionated. Nobody could speak into your life because you know it all. You wouldn't take an advice or a correction from people who love you. This is portrayed in the simple story in the book of Daniel about King Belshazzar when his heart was lifted up in pride, and this is what the text says, but when his heart became arrogant or proud and hardened with pride, he was deposed from his royal throne and stripped of his glory. It will happen. Your pride will uh, depose you. You would lose favor and you would lose good standing in the eyes of people like Belshazzar did. And it would strip you of the good name that you had. People would want to avoid you because of this issue in your life. The seventh cause of the hardening of the heart is the refusal to serve and be served. The aggrieved spouse will refuse to serve. That act of kindness, doing kind things one for another will be in short supply. Or... If the other spouse decides to serve, the aggrieved spouse would not receive it. It would shun it, walk away, slam the door, refuse it. It is a dangerous thing. In the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter and verse 10, St. Paul says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, whenever an opportunity comes to you to serve or be served, let us do good to all people, and I may add especially to your spouse, to those who belong to the family of God. My dear brother or sister, a grieved person, pray about those neglected opportunities. And when it comes back, jump on it very quickly. We can forsake our pride and we can be served and serve others. There are numerous scriptures that relates to the hardening of the heart and uh, because of my time constraint let me show you a few of them in the book of Ephesians and the fourth chapter and verse 17 it says this I say therefore and testify in the Lord that you no longer walk as the rest of the Gentile also walk in the futility of their mind being darkened in their understanding alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardening of their hearts, who having become callous, give themselves up to lust, to work all uncleanliness with greediness. Proverbs 28 and verse 14 says, Blessed is the man who always fears, always fears God and tremble at his word, but one who harden his heart would fall into trouble. Are you heading there? And then in Romans, the second chapter, St. Paul urged the church, but according to your hardness and unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. I can give you many more scriptures, but I'd like to go on to the rest of this message. 
on the hardened heart that precipitate divorce. You might ask, can a hardened heart be changed? And the answer is yes. With God, all things are possible. If you can believe, all things are possible. Thank God that God can change a hardened heart. St. Paul pleaded with the church at current who were going about their lives in a non-Christian way. And he said, I am asking you to respond as if you were my own children. Open your heart to us. And I am taking that position as St. Paul. And I'm pleading with you, though I don't know you and I don't know your situation, but as a senior person in the Lord and one who has been married for more than 50 years, I am asking you to respond as if you were my own child. Open your hearts. Don't harden your hearts. You know why? Because out of your heart, out of the heart of a man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sexuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. My dear viewers, brothers and sisters, if you come to God in repentance, the Bible says, a broken and a contrite heart God will not despise. And like David, after he committed a heinous sin, he came to God and he cried, O oh God, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He realized that the heart of the problem was the problem of the heart. But the Lord used Ezekiel to bring further assurances to us about changing our callous, hard, cold hearts. And this is what the prophet Ezekiel said in the 36th chapter and verse number 25. He says, I will sprinkle clean water in you and you shall become clean from all your uncleanliness, from all your idols. I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit and I will put it within you and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. God is saying this. God is promising you this and God will not go back on his word. And he said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. He further reaffirmed this in the 11th chapter of the same book and said, I will give them one heart. Claim this promise where God would give you and your spouse one heart beating together again as one. A new spirit I will put within them. I will remove the heart of stone, the heart that has become hardened from the flesh, and I will give them a heart of flesh. I believe God can do it for you. You are not too far gone. He's the God of the impossible situation, and your situation is not beyond hope. I'd like to lead you in a very responsive prayer, if you would be humble enough to say this as you look at this program on your electronic device whether it be a handheld device or on your television screen you are hurting as we say in our local palace is that the one who has the iron in their hand feels the heat while others may tell you they understand but nobody knows you're hurt as much as you say it from the depths of your heart. Close your eyes. Don't want to look around at the people who might be next to you or if they are your friends or loving family, let them pray with you. Say, Heavenly Father, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, I bow before you in contrition. I ask you, dear Lord, to forgive me for the hardening of my heart I offer to you this tension and this mess my marriage is in. I offer to you my spouse and myself. We have sinned against heaven and against you. There is coldness and isolation in our relationship. But oh my God, you can take things that are broken and put it together. Lord, I pray that you would do this for us. 
lead us in your faithfulness. O Lord, open my eyes and my ear to hear the words of assurance that you will give me. Instill within me understanding. Heal my troubled relationship. And Lord, give me grace to be humble and to walk before you. Teach me to love you with all my heart and soul. I pray in the name of Jesus. If you will pray this prayer and you need further prayer or counsel, take the time to write or call us. We are all heirs. We are willing to listen to you. Because of the media and uh, the way it is constructed, we can talk to each other across the world. Distance is no problem. Call us. Our phone numbers are on the screen. And uh, if you cannot talk to us or we cannot get to you, no matter which, where you are in the world, we would recommend qualified counselors to talk to you. This program again is coming to you through the courtesy of Mission Tabernacle of William and Waterlane Streets in Princess Town. Give us a like or a subscribe if you are listening on any of the major platforms. By the way, I'm indebted to some of these notes from a blogger by the name of Christy Woods. Her notes has been very uplifting to me and I have used some of them. I want to thank my producer Aaron Jones for helping me put yet another program together and I trust it was a blessing to you. So I ask you to contact us, tell us where you are viewing this broadcast and do stay tuned for our next program next week on the same platform at the same time. May God give you grace and a happy and a holy marriage. In Jesus' name.